Hey guys, I'm glad you're plugged in. I want to talk with you today about Jesus, about aspects of his and characteristics of, of, his, of his behavior, his manner, his personhood. Uh, just tell you, he's the most unique person in the universe. In Isaiah, it says two things about him. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So this expresses humanity and expresses deity. And uh, he is fully God and fully man. And this is really a defining uh, theological concept. But man, it really helps us to recognize how important it is, how stabilizing it is, how beneficial it is, how appropriate and proper it is that we surrender to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Creator, the Redeemer the author and finisher of your faith. And um, I know a lot of you already, you, you bought into it, but you know, sometimes the devil will antagonize us in areas of uncertainty. So I wanna just go in and get clarity from the scriptures, Hebrews chapter one, verse one through three. And uh, the book of Hebrews says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets and in many portions and in many ways, okay? The creator, the, the God of the universe has spoken to us through the prophets, through Moses, through David, through Jeremiah, through Isaiah. He spoke to us through the law that came and was downloaded to Moses on the mountain. He, uh, in Romans chapter 1, instinctually stirs things in us from the standpoint of the, the lower revelation of creation declaring the glory of God. And where I live now, the trees are turning colors and, uh, you know, it's just one of those fantastic moments of beauty. Uh, the autumn sunsets and the, 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 the latter rains, you know, for the harvest and just the beauty of things. And you know, an atheist thinks it's an accident. Uh, a theist thinks there's purpose behind it. And a Jesus follower knows who and for what that purpose was. It was for his pleasure. God liked it. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, whenever he made something, he said, it is good. It is good. It is good. He said it several times. And then when he created everything else, he said, it is very good. So here we see this amazing truth right here. In these last days, he's spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he has made the world. So this glimpse at the vastness and the complexity of the order of things gets focused in on like a laser to his son, Jesus. And here's what it says in verse three, three things. He is the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, and he hold, upholds all things by the word of his power. He, Jesus, is the exact representation. He's the radiance of the Father's glory, the exact representation of his nature. Boy, this is helpful. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. When he made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Oh, man. You just look at that and behold that. And this is very encouraging. It's theologically clarifying. And I'll get back to that in the next few days. Um, but just this first one. He is the radiance of his glory. He, Jesus, is the radiance of his glory. Now, what is glory? You've seen those stained glass windows with halos. You, see, you know, you've seen uh, uh, the sunrise at sunset, you know, where the sunbeams are shooting all over the place. That pales in comparison to the brilliance and the 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 the. the, the presence of and, and power of God. And, and you know, 
I'm running out of time, but I think of John chapter one. So let's read this before we finish today. And you can, you can take this, and study it, and meditate on it for yourself, expand on it, do some cross references. But I'll finish with this since he's the radiance of his glory. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man, that was John the Baptist, sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which, coming into the world, enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. We beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the radiance of his glory. It, he's, it, he's so consistently good. And I want to encourage you to keep following him, tune into him, listen, detect his voice, perceive what he's saying. This is going to be some of the best uh, future we've ever had. God bless you.